Sometimes things look good on paper to the C-suite, but kind of lose their luster when you see how it affects real folks, the guests. Hello, everyone. Alongside Ryan Sir, I'm Don Helbig, and this is Tower Topics. Tower Topics is a podcast by Kings Island fans for Kings Island fans, because that's who we are and that's who we care about. Ryan, it was recently announced that uh, Kings Island has eliminated the ambassador positions, and that has created a lot of um, you know sentiment about that program and what it meant to the guests on social media. And before we get into this, you know, when you're talking about the different budget cuts and things, um, you know, though the removal of the park ambassadors, you know, it, it saddens many. Uh, but Cedar Fair Parks, you know, they're under pressure to reduce expenses. Uh, budget cuts, they began last summer. And as you can see, they're persisting this year so far. Uh, but I, I really hope that the Kings on fans, they avoid directing their frustration at the park mm-hmm. because these decisions are coming from higher authorities. Uh, that, that's right. I mean, that's. I, I always kind of, I don't like it when I see, uh, especially like when people uh, want to say something about, you know, the GM or something like that, uh, as if they're making this decision directly. Right. Um, that's not fair at all. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where we know that stuff is going to happen. Uh, this is probably a position where it's more like, the people on the outside don't really know the importance of this. And I almost wouldn't expect them to know the importance of it. And as we're going to see with a lot of people's comments, a lot of people didn't understand what park ambassadors did unless they had to directly interact with them in which they did a great job of saving the day. Exactly. And, you know, when we're talking about, and you're being tasked with making cuts, you know, this might seem like an easy one. Hey, we can just cut that position. But you really don't know, you know, unless you've been in a guest or been a guest out in the park and had interactions with them and just see, you know, those little touches, you know, go a long way to making, you know, the experience, you know, for some, the best day of the summer, or the best day they ever had, or they convert from, you know, being very upset. And then by the end of the day, they're, they're upgrading their ticket to a season pass, little things like that that go unnoticed. Uh, when you're just looking at the bottom line right there. But one of the uh, park ambassadors, really well known to the guest, was a, an individual named Tom Pavlik. And uh, he made a post on the Season Pass Facebook group where this discussion was taking place about, uh, you know, the position being eliminated and kind of, um, you know, outlined kind of what they did, you know, kind of walked them through. So uh, Tom, and this is, you know, his words, what he he talked about a day in the park for them, the ambassadors. He said, I'm standing on International Street about 1 p.m., and thinking about lunch, two guests approached him and asked where guest services is located. Uh, Tom says, I asked what the problem is, and he wants his ticket money refunded. He's having a horrible day. His wife, you know, uh, that he found out later, um, just nodded. So, like I always am, am, I asked what's going on. After a bit of coaxing, I find out he was in line for Flight of Fear, waited a long time, and did not fit and was asked to leave. So now he wants his money back because he couldn't ride Flight of Fear. So Tom noticed, and he says, I noticed he's about my size, possibly able to fit on Flight of Fear with the right ride up, and it's lunchtime. He goes, so I apologize that we wasted his time and our rides aren't sized appropriately for him. Then I ask him if he likes barbecue. He nods, so I take him over to Coney Barbecue. I comp their lunches and ask if I can get them on would they like to try Flight of Fear again? So while they're eating, I run in to fly, I run, run over to Flight of Fear and talk to the ride supervisor about getting him on the ride safely. She tells me what I need to hear, and I run back to Coney Barbecue, where my new friends are finishing up lunch. I ask if they want to try Flight of Fear again, and they warily said yes. So I escort them to the exit, where Destiny, the ride supervisor, is waiting to put them in the seats she selected. They both fit, no issues, so they ride. I meet them in the exit and ask about the ride. They loved it. They inquire about Banshee, and I give them some helpful hints and enjoy a ride on us card. And I apologize again for their experience. They thank me, 
and walk out with big smiles. Rarely do these stories have a postscript, but this one does. He says, later that afternoon, and again, this is Tom talking, I'm back up front. The couple approaches me again and ask, I ask how their day went. The gentleman shakes my hand and tells me how much I turned their day around. He wants to go to guest services this time to exchange his daily ticket for a season pass. And of course, I welcome to the door. This story may never have made the balance sheet, and I don't think my manager even knows it happened. But that's an example of how we operated and made a difference. And when I was working there, I saw this kind of stuff happening all the time. Yeah, I mean, I if if and if ever there was a testament to what I said at the top of the show, where a lot of people don't understand what these guys do, but those who interact with them, who need them, uh, they make all the difference in the world. This is a fantastic example of it. This person would have gone to guest services, wanted a refund. They're not getting a refund from guest services. So what do they do? They just never come back. And Tom, essentially, by empathizing with them, understanding their situation. He mentioned in there, he's like, the guy was about my size. And I think what he was implying with that is he kind of knows some tricks about getting him, getting onto flight of fear. And as somebody who's six foot one, like I've never been turned away from flight of fear, but that day will come, you know, just because of my height, I'm not particularly like big and neither is Tom. Um, but it, it's, he turned somebody that wanted their money back into somebody that was going to spend more money. And I assume that this is probably not the same story from that day, let alone that season. That's very similar to this with him and his colleagues. Yeah. And then somebody replied to Tom making that post and they said, this is why park ambassadors are so important. Guest experience is so, 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 so important. I'm certain that uh, that couple will come back, tell their friends and in bring the park more, more money a small part of your day. I'm certain that this happens so many times through the day for all of the park ambassadors. And again, from my experience, it did. Yeah. And, and you got to think like from, from what Tom and other park ambassadors had told me is there's, they're very selective as to who could become park ambassadors. It's people with very good um, emotional IQ, as they call it in the business world. Like Tom, Tom is, for those who don't know, Tom, this isn't Tom's main job. He's I'm not going to dox what he does for a living, but he um, he has a very professional job. He just does this because it, he loves the park, you know, and it really kind of takes that. But, um, you know, Tom and Brandon and all the other park ambassadors and, you know, I, I'm not going to go down the entire list, but uh, they they understand the tools that are necessary to turn a day around and you have to be recognized for that in order to even get the position. Uh, and then from there, you got to understand you're, you're not um, the Make-A-Wish Foundation. You're not going around giving away front of the line passes. You're the person who deals with it when someone's freaking out because they couldn't fit on a ride. You're the person dealing with it when a ride breaks down and people are stuck there for, you know, t uh, stuck on the ride for 10 minutes, which they'll say on social media is two hours. You know, um, Tom was very good at being very personable. And it was almost like you could tell that he cared about you and your experience. And as a result of that, um, you, you were dealing with a human being, not an employee. And that's why guests connected with him. So um, I hope Tom sticks around with the park. I hope all the ambassadors find positions that are guest facing at the park. Uh, because my understanding is that they've been invited to come back. But uh, well, they have, but if you're in a different position, you know, you can't maybe leave your, your spot. So if you're working a ride, you can't roam off to go help somebody, you know, or go walk somebody to guest service, do those kind of things. So, yeah, you can have those people there. They can be very good, you know, still in, in whatever role they're in, but they might not be as impactful as they were as a group of ambassadors. Yeah, I, and he wouldn't be able to comp them a meal at Coney Barbecue or anything like that. Like, he had a lot of power. In that, all the ambassadors had a lot of power in that position as far as what they could do for the guests. But you, they also were very good at not balancing the whole like, hey, there's a park ambassador here. Let's go get a front of the line pass thing. Like that was never a thing. They were very good at, no. you know, setting the boundaries and we'll offer it to you if it's appropriate and so on. But uh, we had and you identify the guest. Yeah, you identify the guest. You know, when when you work at a place like Kings Island, uh, you know, and you have the team of ambassadors. You know, or myself, when I would go walk around the park, you can tell when, you know, a guest 
you know, might need help with directions on something. You know, they're looking at their map and they can't quite figure out where, you know, something is you walk up and you try to help them. Um, you know, maybe they're having a, a bad day and you can see that, you know, that they're they're in a you know rush to get the guest service. You can tell something's wrong. Some, you know, they, they, they need some assistance. You know, you, you were able to spend time, you know, coaxing them to get the story, you know, what happened. And then, you know, you can fix it a lot of times on the spot. And when you can do that, you know, you save a guest, they're going to come back. They're going to tell everybody else about that experience. And it's just so invaluable to have those little touches that can help, you know, turn around a day for guests. Yeah. So we had our friend Chris Hughes, who's the uh, head administrator for the Kings Island Season Pass group. Uh, he knew this episode was coming up. So he posted in his group, which is about 70,000 strong, the Kings Island Season Pass holder group, uh, mentioning that it is now public that the park ambassadors were going to be no longer brought back for... Uh, 2024 and asked for people's thoughts and comments. So uh, Don and I kind of compiled a list of a few of them and wanted to share them with you. So uh, the first one is, I will be greatly missing the ambassadors. I rarely needed their services, but it was always nice to say hello or have a quick chat. And I could see the amount of smoothness they added to the park's operations all around. Completely fair. I agree. Yeah. Uh, the next one, um, one of those park ambassadors made my visit on more than one occasion. Yeah, because they had some sort of need. The The park under-delivered, or at least perceived to be under-deliver, and they knew how to help them. Absolutely. Um, and then the next one is, when I was opening the commons booth on I Street in the mornings, I often would see Tom. He always made time to talk to me, and in my opinion, he represents the best of what KI has to offer. I agree with that. Losing the ambassador program is devastating. It's a wonderful way to welcome guests to the park and lend a helping hand to those during their visits. So that's a that's a commons associate. So they're a third party, but an employee nonetheless. You know. Again, those little touches mm -hmm. that we talked about before. Now this one's kind of a novel. Uh, one of the one of the Kings Island ambassadors, Bill, gave my family and I very special experience this year. My mom and dad had been coming to Kings Island since they were kids, and my sister and I have come every year since we were born. Since we live about four hours away, Kings Island trips have always been special. In October, Bill helped to give my mom a very special birthday experience with a free funnel cake and a front of the line ticket for all four of us. At Winterfest, he made sure that we got to ride in the parade. Both of these experiences uh, were some of the highlights to our year. The Kings Island Ambassador Program is invaluable, and I'm sad to see it go. Yeah. I mean, taking a day and common making it magical, here. right? Yeah, common theme. Little Absolutely. touches. Absolutely. Uh, so here's another associate. I worked in security and interacted with them quite often. I believe they provided a great service to the guests in the park. They were out in the park and could take action on the spot. And that's the key right there. They could take action on the spot. They're all great people, and Kings Island will be worse off by not having them in the park. Um, I, I, I do like how a lot of these quotes are from employees where it's because be, be, don't you think the simple thing to do and Don, you're, you were kind of on the inside with this, but as a line associate, don't you think there'd be a lot of envy in terms of like, I have to work this ride and these guys just get to walk around handing out ice cream, but you don't get any of that. You, you get a lot of, no. you know, I had this guest problem and the ambassadors helped us out. Security said, these guys are great. Uh, that's another common theme right there is, um, you know, the employee saw the, the value in it. Okay, next one. I really worry that Kings Island is losing touch with what makes the park special and worth revisiting. Last year, we were refused a drink of water because they didn't have the right cup behind the counter. The manager did fix this when I spoke with them, but things like this should never happen. It was a hot day. And uh, denying a fellow human being water just because Kings Island didn't have the tiny plastic cups on hand is unethical. It is worth guests having, or is, they say, is it worth guests having medical incidents due to dehydration all because something as uh, petty as a cup? This is what happens when money is a top priority. Whatever it takes to fatten the bottom line. Sad. Now, they don't really say where the ambassadors would have come in, but at the same time, you know, makes a point, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I think that they're saying that overall, like, this is yet another example. And, um, it, it, but we go back to the empowerment thing. Like, t Tom was able to give these people, you know, the, the ride on us pass for Banshee and was able to comp their meal at, at Coney Barbecue and stuff. 
this line associate wasn't able to give them a paper cup full of water. Right. And, and that is part of the problem. And if they want to replace the ambassadors, they're going to have to learn to empower the associates to do what they need to do to make the guests happy. And that means like if somebody is a greeter on a ride and they see somebody walk off upset, they, they can do the things that, that Tom did in that anecdote, like, or at least get some, they can't leave their post, you know, but you know, Oh, you couldn't fit. You know what? I, maybe we can try again. Let, let's go up there. You know, that sort of stuff. That's what it's going to take to replace. I mean, they, they could never fully replace them because they've got people dedicated to it, but it's going to come down to empowering the employees to make a best day experience in order to kind of put a bandaid on the swoon. That's right. What's next? Uh, next is as an employee, I aspire to be an ambassador someday. Well, I got news for you, buddy. Even though I'm in a different department, <laughs> I'm not sure. And everyone realizes just how much these ambassadors will be missed. Well, I'll tell you this. Nobody started as an ambassador. They were in other, Tom was in rides and, you know, everybody else was in other different facets. And then they um, got picked out to be an ambassador. So if the program were to come back or if they, you know, change directions on this and bring it back next year or whatever. Um, just keep on working hard and making sure that guests have the best experience and uh, you'll certainly get picked for it. It doesn't matter if you work in food or games or something like that. All right. The next one from working in admissions to moving to rides and not being a guest too often. I still interacted with the park ambassadors often, but even as a guest, usually if I was on my way into the park, I could be uh, walking quickly past one and double check that the ride I was heading to was open or double check park hours or ask what uh, the special in the employee break room was for the day. They knew pretty much everything that they could possibly know, or if they didn't, they very quickly were able to find the answer for you. As an employee, they could be there to help diffuse situations when rides go down. They could check on us, make sure we were having a good day, uh, had water, uh, when I worked at the uh, help centers, you know, the dry park in the Soak City, uh, they would check on me to make sure I was doing okay, and they'd bring me water if needed. Uh, I never had to ask first. I met a few amazing individuals who came from all walks of life in different departments before they became park ambassadors. I got to watch young friends from admissions become park ambassadors. They were the best of the best, the ones to look up to and aspire to be. Now, we talk about the water, bringing the water. You know, some of these uh, locations around the park, there's one employee there. They can't leave. You know, so just a little thing like that. Hey, do you need anything? You need some water? Just a little touch like that. Yeah. And I mean, if they're going to do that for an employee, it's imaginable to do for the guests. All right. Uh, so here's a kind of a touching one. May 21st, 2022, Tom spots us having a snack in Coney Mall while taking a break from coaster stock fun. He strikes up a conversation with my son. Steven explained that he tie-dyed his shirt as a celebration of his favorite coaster banshee. Tom gets a huge smile and gives him this very exclusive banshee sticker. I've got a feeling Tom made the banshee sticker, by the way. I've actually got a couple pins and stuff that he's given me. Pure joy. My kiddo was on top of the world that day. It's the little things. Thanks, Tom. Yep, magic moment. You don't have to be Disney. No, not at all. And uh, this one here, uh, they're having a unique perspective on the situation. I was there from the beginning of the program when there were only four to five people running the program. It was a beta test program, and the ideas and experiences they had made it an instant success. The program grew uh, to being an important piece of the guest experience, interacting with guests, uh, giving them unique experience, such as family of the day in T-shirts. Remember the family of the day I program? I do, yeah. Uh, that opened the park. Uh, they were there for the rope drop, uh, drop, walking around, making sure guests were happy and enjoying themselves. We're also giving unsuspecting guests a ride button or a voucher for a blue ice cream cone. They were able to assist ride supervisors in regards to rides that went down with guests on it and unloading them to make sure everyone was safe and comfortable, getting them a bottle of water or something more, such as a single-use fast lane or another ride of their choice, goes a long way to a guest who didn't expect it and some that didn't want compensation, or maybe that they did want compensation. Uh, they tried to assist them also. My personal experience was with my 50th birthday and asking them if I could get on the Winterfest float. They let me and made a wonderful birthday. I will miss them in their green shirts and their green shoes around the park this year and hopefully see them in another capacity for the park. I have a feeling that when the dust settles, something like this will be brought back. You know, because I, 
it, when right now, you know, we're in a cost cutting mode, merger, blah, blah, blah. We've, we've exhausted that whole thing, but it, we're going to have to loop back around to guests aren't having as good of an experience. What do we need to do to fix it? Or employees can't do what they need to do to make sure that guests leave happy. And that's at the core of the business. And um, this is a great example. You know, it's like, why would you spend your birthday at King's Island? Well, last time I went, it was awesome. We got to ride on a float and stuff. Um, invaluable, you know, memories that you can't replace. All right. Uh, so this is the last one. A couple of years ago, after a ride on the beast, our son got a really bad nosebleed. I remember reading this one, actually. After we were in the restroom for a while, one of the ambassadors came in and stayed with us the whole time until everything was fine. Before leaving, he gave our family a front of the line pass to use later that day. These types of interactions are what make the park special. A terrible mistake has been made. Uh, I, the thing that really impresses me is that he stayed with them the whole time. He didn't give them a rag and walk away. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. So again, you know, we, we talked about, you know, these little touches, you know, things that uh, help make that best day of the uh, year experience, um, not only for the guests, but they were also very valuable for the other associates on the park making sure, you know, that they had what they needed, whether it was water, you know, assistance or helping to calm down a guest or, you know, somebody got stopped on a ride, you know, for a little bit of time and, you know, they need to come over and help defuse that situation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a void there and you're going to need, uh, you know, associates throughout the park are going to have to, you know, like you mentioned the word empowered, but, you know, just be able to kind of, you know, help fill this void. Empowered to fill the void. I, I think most want to. Yeah. I, I, you know, it, nobody wants to see their guests. Have, it's funny because it, there have been, everybody has, every generation thinks the last generation is terrible, but I will tell you that whether it's Kings Island or anywhere else, but especially Kings Island, you, you go up to some kid uh, at a register at a food place that looks so bored and you think they're going to be a little smirk to you or whatever. And they're just like, oh, Hey, yeah. Do you want your drink too? You know, it, everybody has the same goal. And I, I think they do a pretty good, good job of only hiring people that are on that page. Uh, and it comes down to empowering them to do so. So uh, if any of you yeah. guys are park ambassadors, former park ambassadors, thank you for what you've done. Uh, this is just a testament to the impact that you made on the park. And we hope to see you again. Yeah. And as we mentioned at the beginning, you know, don't fault the park, you know, for this. Don't fault the general manager. Don't fault, you know, the, the department heads or anything like that. Uh you know, these are being mandated from above, you know, that the parks have to cut expenses and, you know, you look where you can do that and tough decisions have to be made and it's unfortunate. And uh, this was one of those cuts that it's going to have a little bit of an impact. Absolutely. And uh, we'll see how it goes next season. All right, let's move on to the listener question. This came from Julie M. I worked at Kings Island from 1979 to 1983 in rides and fondly remember Don riding the racer. Such a shy guy back then. I enjoy Tower Topics. Well, thank you. It brings back memories. Of the episodes you've done, which one is your favorite? Ooh, good question. Ryan, do you have a favorite that comes to mind right away? We've had some really good ones. Um, I really liked... I like the historical... We just recently did one on Wild Animal Habitat, uh, Lion Country Safari. Yeah. Um, the ones that I like are old defunct attractions that I did get to do followed by, I like the attractions that I didn't get to do, but I get to learn about from you. And then rounding it out is I like talking about current events, like carnival, winter fest, stuff like that. Uh, and then like current rides, that's, that's my least favorite. I all, I enjoy all of them, but I'm saying if I had to make a hierarchy, um, it's hard to pick just one, but those are my tiers. What about you? I think the one we just did with Wild Animal Habitat or whatever name you, you know, it went by when you experienced it. I think for that one, just because for me, it brought back a lot of memories because I did enjoy it as a guest, but also because it's not one of those attractions that people talk about a lot. You know, you still see, you know, people today talking about Son of Beast or they're talking about, you know, another ride that was there or talking about the Vortex, you know, talking about shows that used to be there. Um, Phantom Theater comes up all the time. You know, so those are kind of things that are, you know, still out there relevant in the minds of a lot of people. And wild animal habitat is kind of, uh, you know, kind of hiding behind the curtain there a little bit. Doesn't get a lot of uh, attention, a lot of discussion out there. So for those reasons, that's why I enjoyed that one the most. 
Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I was surprised that on the social media, when we put it up, there wasn't a lot more of like, hey, I didn't know this because no one seems to talk about it, you know? Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, great question. And uh, I didn't know you were shy growing up, Don, but here you are. Look at me now. I got a podcast. Now you got right? a podcast. All right, cool. Hey, I'm Ryan Sir, along with the shy Don Helbig, and this is Tower Topics.